I want to expand on whatever Peter said a little bit here uh, regarding the, the native uh, version. So uh, looking at it from an, from an overall like wider angle, what this means is that previously, if you wanted to develop your application, um, you would have to build for ElastOS and you would have to deploy it and people it wasn't, and then I would have to, if I wanted my family members to use the application that I developed, I would have, I would have to ask them to download the ElastOS application first, and then go ahead and, you know, uh, download the application inside ElastOS and then be able to run that, right? What this allows us to do with this, you know, new functionality in the future is whenever the developer is developing the application for ElastOS, um, it's a matter of changing a flag, you know, while developing. So I can choose, okay, I want to target ElastOS. So then when I do that, I can easily run it inside ElastOS and I can deploy it for ElastOS. And then with another flag, I can choose, okay, now I want to run it as, as a standalone application for Android or for iOS. And so that will let me um, run this exact same code but as a standalone application. So that standalone application has a couple of benefits where it allows anyone to deploy their application to Apple Store or Google Play Store directly instead of letting, you know, someone, instead of asking someone to download ElastOS and then going that route. And then maybe like, um, you know, and then let's say I want to switch another flag, right? Maybe I want to run that code, but now I want to target my desktop now the i want to be able to do that too so you know this introduces that kind of uh versatility when it comes to the development uh for developers so they don't really need to care about all the bridges and all the plugins and how that works underneath they just write the code and ionic you know using angular uh framework react framework and then they can choose the platform they want to deploy on and then uh they can with the push of a button hopefully, eventually, uh, you'll be able to deploy this one, one piece of code to, you know, five or even 10 different platforms with the push of a button. And if you can do that, then, you know, um, you, you'll have a very far reach uh, when it comes to, you know, marketing the application or uh, providing the same feature for um, in, in multiple platforms. Obviously, each platform has its own advantages and its own disadvantages, but the idea is you want, we want to be versatile, right? We want to make it very, very easy. So, you know, run, write code once, run everywhere. That's the eventual goal with this native, uh, Trinity native project. Yeah, I find it so fascinating because this again shows that, you know, Elasos is not just a blockchain project and this is the perfect example of that. Um, because can you then also say that pretty much every um, D app that uses this kind of service that I think that anyone should use eventually, um, could you then say that these D apps would be automatically like smart web D apps? Could you could you make that statement, kind of? Yeah, I mean um, they are all um, um, you know smart web D apps because they are utilizing. Uh, we're not really you know, I want to put an emphasis on bright code once deployed everywhere. Uh, that's because we're actually utilizing this exact same technology. Um, obviously, like if you were to, you know, have a standalone application deployed to Android, I'm sorry, Google Play or Apple Store, you have to play by the rules. So even if you are able to build it, deploy it, maybe you'll not get, ex you won't get accepted, right? In that case, uh, ElastOS uh, browser itself is a great option because, um, you know, applications, any kind of, you can run any kind of applications without being restricted by any central entity, right? So in a way, um, I would say the true, like the applications inside, running inside ElastOS are the true decentralized applications because they cannot be censored or um, like Apple can't decide to just remove it from their app store because it's not, on Apple Store, it lives on the uh, on the decentralized storage, uh, you, you know, protected by your DID, uh, your developer's DID, so on and so forth. I um, mean, um, but 
that's that's the idea with that. Um, so uh, desktop, you know, I, I would even go as far as to say that the desktop will be the true um, platform where I think users will want to watch out for it. And we'll be using quite often because when we talked about Elastos, we have been talking about, you know, being able to easily sell movies um, and so on and so forth, right? So with, I mean, of course you can watch movies and stuff on your mobile phone, but usually when I'm watching a movie, I want, I want to watch it on my desktop. So this just brings that whole new um, domain where uh, developers can build any kind of applications like, you know, YouTube-like applications or any kind of applications utilizing smart contracts, utilizing blockchain, high plus plus, everything, DID, and then you, you can, you can, you can uh, play that uh, on your desktop. And then maybe you want to switch to your mobile platform, right? Then you should be able to do that too. And it will run on mobile too. So that's, that's, the, that's the goal when it comes to making everything just one cohesive platform where you deploy it once and then the users can run it from anywhere. You are using your Hive++, plus plus, your vault to back up your entire data. So like, you know, even your, even your chat history on Hyper Messenger or your application data that you have on your mobile phone using Hive++, plus plus, you'll be able to back it up so that you can just quickly hop onto your desktop and all of your data is right there. And it's not really on any company's central servers. It's on your own server, right? On your own node. Um, so, so it, it just comes full, full circle. I see. 